So yeah, the title of the talk is The Slow Regard of Silent Things, which is the title of a Patrick Rothfuss novel, if one knows that. And kind of what I'm sort of thinking through is um, um, experimental archaeology. Uh, this project kind of began as a piece of experimental archaeology. Um, experimental archaeology is enjoying something of a, of a kind of renaissance at the moment, as, as probably many of you know, which in many ways is good. I would suggest experimental archaeology needs a lot more theoretical exposition, however, and that's something that kind of started me thinking as we were going along through this. Something that I found very useful um, to think about this work is, um, is deep mapping. I don't know how many people are familiar with deep mapping. It, of course, has a, a connection with, with archaeology through work of Mike Pierce and, and Michael Shanks. Um, and Clifford McLucas, the late Clifford McLucas, McLucas, 10 tenets on deep mapping. So, I mean, just very briefly, so just to summarise some of these ideas, um, I love this Briggs, uh, Ian Briggs quote, um, deep mapping, a constellation of shifting impulses, or um, in brief, Briggs again, utilising practices drawn from literature, performance and the visual arts to evoke the warp and weft of materials, perspectives and temporalities that make the place. Of course, deep mapping is spatial. But what I've found is, is the kind of the ten tenets of deep mapping have helped me kind of think about what the panel's project has kind of evolved into. Of course, uh, we're talking really about objects, but objects are already always in a place in the world. So it's different sides of the same coin, really. Um, and also, given this session, um, the role of the digital within this. And again, I appreciate that probably some of what I say is probably not very sophisticated, and that's partly why I kind of want to bring this to this session to get people's thoughts and feedback on this. So the project really began, this is the Palace Boy vessel, the original vessel um, at the time of the project. This is an Iron Age wooden trough or a vessel that was um, found in a peat bog in 2001, excavated by the Irish, Irish Archaeological Weapon Unit, um, Conor McDermott there. And this project, and very briefly, um, as a project to reconstruct or to recreate the Palace Boy vessel, and that was where, where Mark came in as a, as a, woodwork, as a woodworker. Um, we kind of moved on from that to, to other wooden artefacts, prehistoric wooden art, artefacts, um, notably the, the Balagulish goddess that some of you may be familiar with, which is in the uh, National Museum there in Scotland. She looks like that now, and she is definitely a she. This, this is the photograph of the, the, the goddess when she was discovered in 1880. Actually, really the only surviving evidence really in the archive. So we went up to Balagulish, and we worked within the community in the community hall there, and saying we, again, this is Mark, who did all the hard work. Um, and Mark remade um, the goddess, and that's the goddess um, in situ near to where she was found. Um, um, the, original, the original find spot, with what remains of Balahulish Moss, up there in North Balahulish. What I found helpful in terms of thinking through this is the, um, is the work of um, Celine Springit. Uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with this paper, uh, going flatter or deeper, connecting deep mapping, flat ontologies, and the democratising of knowledge. So, again, what I became very interested in is, is really the way that we can use, and we talked about craft been mentioned, and kind of the role of craft, um, and what, what we've done with the project, it's just kind of grown like a fungus. And, <laughs> and again, I, I don't pretend to have, to have read um, a thousand plaques in, in, in depth, but I got really drawn to the idea of the rhizome, because the project kind of grew rhizome-like, and had all these kind of shoots that kind of came off it. So. As we went along, we had all sorts of connections and contacts which became interested. So we had um, other artists, this is an artist in Cork. We had uh, Mark had a workshop, a woodworking workshop. People made their own figurines, that's one of them there. Um, we worked with students up in, um, in UCD, the Experimental Archaeology Centre there. Um, and also um, children as well. We had, we had fantastic interactions um, with, with children. And again, it's using these kind of artifacts to engage people. Sarah mentioned enchantment, and this very much came out of this. We left the Balagul, she got us behind with the community, and she did a tour of the local schools. And she's been buried back in the peat. So hopefully at some point we're going to go back and um, dig her up. And there's, and there's really no limit to um, these engagements. <laughs> um, during the open day, we held in the Cork Museum, and someone suggested the vessel may have been a crib. We don't know what it was used for. We never know, it's really massive in the context of this. So we had a test, in inverted commas, of, of the vessel as a crib, and that was remarkable. The baby was a willing, willing offering. <laughs> I've, I've already run over time, so I'm going to kind of pull you through the end of this. But I mean, the, dig the role of digital in this is fairly clear. I mean, Brian has documented all this. He's a photographer and an artist, so he has his own kind of uh, artistic response to this project. We've had various outputs through the, the usual channels, through Facebook and Twitter, the project blog. Uh, all there has been um, scanning both the um, the uh, remade artifacts and some of the original ones. There, she's uh, scanning the 
the, the goddess herself or remains the goddess will dry down again. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some, uh, I won't pull them now, there's some images on Sketchfab if anyone's interested in the link to that. Um, so I say, these kind of, all these connections just developed, they weren't planned, I'm not suggesting we set out with this kind of idea to, to, to kind of work in this way, and I think that's really how it happened, if we didn't have a plan. And people just got rolled in and we went along, and, and this is what's marvellous about it, and, and say joyous and wondrous. And everyone seemed to get it, all the interactions just kind of happened. So it's another reason I'm talking about it, is, is if anyone has any thoughts or wants to interact with in some way, that's the right word, then, then gives a shout. We've got all sorts of kind of ideas through the blog and all sorts of discussions that went in all kind of directions we didn't plan at all. Um, one of these was this, we had um, a, a, a court has a thriving experiment with percussion scene and we had some experimental percussionists who played the reconstructed vessel. Um, there's, there's a link to that, I won't put it up now. Um, we're actually having a, another palace boy sounding in a couple of weeks time as, as well. So again, all these kind of interactions around the vessel, and again, it's been facilitated, the outputs, the communication has been facilitated through, through the digital. And again, during the open day, we, we asked, we, we asked um, children for their responses. We provided a sheet that you just can't really see it. There was just the outline of the vessel. We asked them to provide their interpretations of the vessel, and that was fantastic. And this was um, this is Ben Keneally's work, my first thought, it was especially crafted for a child king and chief of that time. It was a fascinating woodwork of that era. Um, so again, we're getting all the responses, and, and it, yeah. other archaeological colleagues have said, you know, what's this told you? What's it told you about the vessel? What have you learned? And it doesn't matter, you know? We have learned some stuff that in experimental archaeology terms is interesting, but I don't think that's the kind of key part of what's happened to the project. Right, I've run far over five minutes, I'm sorry about that. Um, I've skipped over a lot of stuff there, um, but I'd be really keen for any thoughts, observations, um, or suggestions, as I say, within the session. I appreciate um, maybe not linked uh, very directly to kind of some of the other themes. Um, but I have read all the papers, and I very much enjoyed them, and I've got lots of scribblings in my bag, in my notebook, which is in the room. So, anyway, <laughs> thank you, I'll shut up now.